The Pencil Talk Takeover continues, and we're at maybe the most gorgeous ballpark in the country, Founders Park, here with Coach Mark Kingston. Coach, I appreciate the time today. No, my pleasure. Um, on this journey to kind of help tell college baseball's story, uh, what better place to start, in my opinion, one of college baseball's blue blood? Your fan base so devout. I'm curious, when people come to the ballpark to watch the Gamecocks play, what do you want them to know about your squad? Well, I want them to know that it's, it's a talented squad because we all work very hard in recruiting, so it starts with that. But I also want them to know that once they get to our program, that they're going to work hard, they're going to be prepared, and that when we play a game, like, we're going to give it everything we got. I think the fans deserve that. Alumni deserve that. Anybody that respects the game feels that that's the way it should be. So, you know, I want our team to be a very talented, prepared team that lays it all on the field, has a lot of fun. If you watch our games, you'll see our guys. We, we encourage our guys to enjoy the game. Obviously, within reason, respect the game and respect your opponents. But we want to have a lot of fun because I think when you, when you have a lot of fun, you play better, and the fans enjoy that as well. So that's what I want to see. I think today's college baseball landscape, the game's growing. I, I was fortunate enough to be in Omaha last year, and it was the most watched college world series of all time. Can you kind of speak to the growth of the game and, and where your, your squad kind of sits? Yeah, I mean, there's no question the game is growing. All you, all you have to do is look at, at the ratings on TV, at the attendance figures throughout the country, um, at the interest in terms of the amount of media, the growing media around our sport. NIL numbers are getting bigger. Everything about our game is growing. So uh, I think it's a great thing. Obviously, my whole life I've dedicated to baseball. Um, so uh, I love to see that. I love to see players getting rewarded and getting promoted uh, like the other sports have historically. So I think it's all positive. I, it, it, we've seen the, uh, at the office we're sitting in, it, your, your resume speaks for itself. I get kind of goosebumps checking out like those old 2010, 2011 teams. Right? I think for like a lot of people in my age demographic, um, you know, the Merrifield and the JBJ, like those are the teams that I kind of fell in love with college baseball. Um, you were a North Carolina guy. I got to ask you, was there like an aha college baseball for you moment that, that you may have fell in love with it? Because I, you've been around the game for so long. I'm curious, what was that moment for you? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, in terms of college baseball, I, I had always loved baseball growing up. I collected baseball cards and I watched it on TV and then Really, I always loved this. I loved all sports growing up. I loved basketball, I loved football, I loved baseball. And you know, baseball eventually became my sport uh, through high school. But just, I grew up loving baseball at all levels. Um, my college baseball moment, I would say, I remember ESPN started broadcasting uh, college baseball very early on. And Texas and Miami, they would show a lot because they would have a big rivalry. They were two of the blue bloods in college baseball. And I remember watching them on TV and thinking, man, that's really cool. As a high school player, I'd love to be a part of something like that someday. That was some gorilla ball in mean, those bats. Dang. You know, it was <laughs> funny because Texas and Miami were known as the speed teams because they both played on AstroTurf. Yeah. You had the LSUs that were hitting a ton of home runs. Oklahoma State back then, a ton of home runs. So, yeah, there's a lot of really cool history. So those Texas were the small ball. They went sack bunts every year. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they did. And then, but they also had the Roger Clemens right. of the world, you know, throwing some That's street. That's awesome. I, when you talk about your the Gamecocks this season, the Yard Cox, one of the more prolific offenses that everyone's really excited about um, with this upcoming season. It, I'm curious from a head coaching standpoint, it, do the preseason rankings, like, do they dictate, like, do you guys seem to take note, like, do you care, do you use it as a chip on your shoulder? I'm curious, like, what those conversations in that locker room are. Like. I think it could be all of the above. Right. You know, I think last year, at one point, we had worked our way up to being the number two team in the country last year when, when, everything, when we were hitting on all cylinders. And most of the polls didn't have us in the top 25. So last year, you could use it as a little bit of a fuel for the fire and chip on your shoulder. This year, most of the polls have us in that 12 range, which is obviously much better than, than uh, last year at this time. Um, but you hope to move up just like we did last year. So I think we're at, whatever the polls are, you can use it to your benefit, whether, hey, look, everybody respects us or nobody respects us. There's, there's a lot of different angles that you can use as motivation as coaches and players. So uh, I think we're in a pretty solid spot right now. Most of the polls have us in that 12 range. Uh, but obviously, by the end, we want to be in that top eight. And, Hopefully in the top two yeah, and not yeah. two. Two, <laughs> not two. Uh, speaking of two, you got two preseason All-Americans, and I know that everyone's raving about it, but to me it's the depth of this lineup. But but getting to know those All-Americans, uh, Messina behind the play, I think is one of the more underrated defensive catchers in the country. But but what I've learned is 
the leadership, especially with that rotation, that was so unique to me. Like, obviously, it's so understood, like, how important that relationship is between the battery duo, but you kind of speak to, like, how his three-year tenure here at South Carolina, what he's been able to bring to that lineup as well. Yeah, you know, out of Somerville. Um, yeah. So, uh, even early in his high school career, he, he had made a, a pretty good name for himself. Uh, he came in as a freshman here and, and struggled some, like a lot of freshmen do in the SEC. Uh, but following his freshman year, he went out and played in the Northwoods League and, and worked his butt off. Worked his butt off last fall, and then you could slowly start to see the light going on and yeah. the development coming. And a year ago at this time, we we thought he's going to be our opening day catcher, but you also had some other guys that were in the mix. Um, so speed ahead a year now. He's first team All American. Hit 17 homers last year. I wouldn't trade him for any catcher in the country. And really, he's the heart and soul of our team. Uh, the the emotion he brings, the passion he brings. He's the ultimate winner. Uh, he's gritty, uh, and and the players on this team respect him. Uh, so he's got everything you want behind the plate. He's got the leadership. He brings plus offense. Like he's everything you want. And so it's been really great to see his. Development. I always think it's important to highlight those dudes because they deserve it. But I, I, speaking from an underdog perspective, I'm curious, who's the guy that's not getting enough love maybe around here? I, it could even be like a Pantra. I don't know. I, yeah. Who's the guy that doesn't get a ton of love around here that you think is going to really blow up on the scene? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, obviously, we value everybody in the program on the inside. Um, I think there's a lot of guys that, that you know probably are, are set up to, to have a really good year that nobody knows about right now, last year at this time. You know, very few people knew Mahoney or right. Hicks. Yeah. And they, you know, Hicks ended up starting the first game of Super Regional. And nobody really knew that name last year. So, you know, off the top of my head, it's hard to just name any yeah. one or two guys. I don't want to do that. I don't want to offend, you know, hurt the feelings of my players right now if I don't name them. Uh, but I will just say that there's a lot of candidates to do that this year. Love that. Uh, you mentioned Mahoney to me. And there's so much emotion and passion around this ballpark. Like, there's a lot of juice and, and there is a lot of fun. Um, how important is, I, I always say, like, the sixth man, like, we're playing basketball, but, like, you know, Founders Park has played with such a competitive advantage when this place is rocking. Is this fan base deal? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, I, I compare it to uh, Boston or New York, right. you know, as, as it relates to big league baseball. There are some places on, in, in college you go to, and it's more like Kansas City or Milwaukee, smaller market, you know, a little more tame. Um, but Founders Park, South Carolina, a lot of the SEC yeah. schools, it's like playing in New York or Boston. So there's a lot of passion. And that can be good or bad, you right. know, at times. And you've <laughs> yeah. got to have thick skin. You've got to be able to deal with it. But I think this place attracts the kind of people that can handle it, that can deal with it, that want it, that thrive on it. And so, uh, again, you know, I want our, our players to know there's a lot of expectations here you know, for players and coaches. Uh, but we're going to attack it. With the, in these crazy environments, is that why it's so important to have a bodyguard and a guy like Cromer? I think he's a tough dude. Well, for, for your audience that doesn't know, David Cromer, Agent 31, uh, it developed into my bodyguard last year uh, at press conferences. He sits to my direct right, uh, right over my shoulder, just in case any of the media gets out of line or you, know, you just never know with crazy fans. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, again, we work our ass off, but we want to have a lot of fun while we're at it. That's just another example. Yeah, you can 31. I did not know the nickname. That's really good. Um, I'm, I'm curious, as we dive into like this South Carolina culture and fabric, and I think we've kind of perfectly personified it, um, we're starting this new theory. Have you heard like people doing like the Mount Rushmore deals? Where it's like, yeah. uh, the Mount Rushmore of yeah. like, you know, basketball yeah, or goats sure. or whatever. Sure. So we're mixing it up. We're college baseball guys here. I want to know your weekend rotation of South Carolina icons. Doesn't have to be baseball, sport, I did I just anybody who perfectly represent represents the Gamecock Nation. Um, who start on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and who are you bring out of the back end to get closer? Ooh, you're putting me on the spot. So we're all talking. baseball or all sports? You can do any it doesn't even have to be sports. It could be country music, it could be, you know, just anybody that's done. Well the Mount Rushmore of, of people that bring notoriety to South Carolina. Love that. Um, you've got to start with, with our man Darius Rucker. Yes, like Goose Friday, you know, right that guy. Yeah, potentially. He's going to have to prove it. You know, he's going <laughs> to have to throw, show that he can throw strikes. But yeah, he's a potential Friday night guy. Um, you go to football, and, and I mean, Jadavion Clowney, I mean, number one pick in the draft. I think you've got to look there. I like that. Um, I think you've got to look at Don Staley for having won the two national championships. And then you probably got to look at Ray Tanner for winning two national championships. 
I would say that it's the top four that I can think of off the top of my head. That was good. I, Dawn's got that calm, cool, collected presence on a Sunday, too, that might be really strong. I like that. You're winning every day that, that Dawn pitches. I With think, I think we know that. She, 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 she brings maybe the most swag in sport <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, all right, some, some hack attack rapid fire questions. Uh, how many how many swings do you guys get around? Very. Around in the, yeah, edge, like, so the like, field? Yeah, yeah. Five, I say six. anywhere between five and ten, okay. based on what you're working on. Now. All right, so I'll give you five to ten, whatever comes to mind, all you. Um, you're a stud in your own right, and I think the people got to know what was your walk up song. Ooh, that's, you know, I played just at the very beginning of walk up songs, okay. and I don't want to date myself too much. <laughs> yeah, okay, um, so you got one of that. But there was an old song, and I'm going to give you a little insight that the, the kids these days haven't figured this one out yet. My walk-up song was called Coming Home from Kiss. Now, here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. It was the live version. So what you heard when I would walk to the plate, because it was a live version, you would hear the crowd in the song. And so it, it made it seem like, and the first time anybody heard it when you're, you know, when new teams came oh, in, yeah. they thought, man, the crowd gets loud when this guy walks to the plate. So, Nobody else has picked up on that. I don't know why. You want to talk about a savvy bed move? That's I mean, it, Yeah, it was a little cheesy, but <laughs> we had a lot of fun. Uh, if if the Gamecocks get to unlock, can we see you dressed up as Kiss in the dugout for no. a game? No shot. No, there's there's a limit to what I'll do, and that that would be the limit. that would be a little bit too much eye black. I'll think. do a lot to help skip to Omaha. That's just not it. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, Pre game meal. <laughs> Whatever we have here in Founders, okay. we do, uh, Ryan West, our director of ops, does a great job catering meals for us uh, before and after games, and so whatever we're having that day. Awesome. Okay. Are you a shoe guy? Did I know you were all Under Armour. Is there like a pretty uh, yeah. kit that I, have? I have to officially on the record say how great uh, the Under Armour product is, and you yes. see I have my Under Armours on today. Without question, boom, Under Armour, uh, I didn't know all the stats. Um, that was a popular answer at the basketball class. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how about if you could have dinner with anybody on the planet, who are you rocking with? Ooh, that's a good question. Maybe a Nick Saban, that's a good, maybe a Mike Krzyzewski. Um, on the planet, obviously that's what we're talking about. Yeah, I think we'd all, good. we'd all love to go Jesus if he came back. <laughs> yeah, There'd be a lot of good questions to ask there. <laughs> yeah. um, but on the planet, Mike Krzyzewski, Nick Saban, um, Don Shul and Dean Smith were two great coaches that I loved growing up, and they have both passed on. Um, but I think you've got to look at you know those those kinds of coaches to just try to see yeah. that you can learn. Uh, I'm gonna get back to the rapid fire. But I'm so curious about it. So were those kind of coaching like mentors, or like people that you kind of looked up to and wanted to model yourself? Yeah, like? you know, you mentioned I had played in North Carolina, and growing up, I was a, I was a North Carolina basketball fan a lot of because what Dean Smith had done with the program, because Michael Jordan was there, you know, those things. And, I was just really drawn to how Dean Smith ran a program about the class, the dignity, um, his guys, again, being talented, but also playing hard and playing together. Um, Don Shula, the same way. I grew up a Miami Dolphin fan. And Don Shula was known for the same traits, you know, dignity, class, um, but they would get after you too. So I kind of, as coaches, I would say those are the two guys. Before I ever knew I wanted to be a coach someday, those were two coaches that I really looked up to. I love that. I, uh, I, I'm i curious, too. I'm going to brag on you a little bit. 1988 State Player of the Year in uh, the Nova area. Your dog on the diamond. Um, did you have a guy that maybe models your game after? Like, did you have a go-to player? Yeah, for sure. Don Mattingly. Yeah. I was a big Don Mattingly fan. And, and I ended up being drafted by the Yankees out of high school. So that was a, a pretty cool thing. I knew I wanted to go to college. But yeah. getting you know getting contacted by the Yankees, who were the home of my favorite player growing up, Don Mattingly, yeah. was a pretty cool thing. That's a cool thing. In the coaching game, you've, you've coached for Team USA. Yeah, obviously, you've had this tenure. Yet. Has there ever been a guy that you've walked around and you're like, oh, wait, that's like that? You've met, gotten the opportunity you've done that? Or is it like, has that? you got a fanboy over anybody? No, I'd say Dan Moreno's the one guy. I, one. I met him <laughs> I met him last year okay. um, you know, at, at a Miami Dolphins game, and that was pretty cool. So I would say that's the one guy that I had fanboyed over yeah. that I had met in person. Nice. That's a good one. I, uh, I was a big Astros fan growing up, so Biggio was my guy. Like in Biggio, like, Bagwell, oh, pretty good. The killer bees. Like, pretty good run there. Goosebumps just thinking about it. But yeah, I, I've never really liked fanboy, but that was the first time like I'd even heard the term. I was like, oh. Yeah. You feel it, right? Yeah. You feel it. It's, it's a real thing. thing. Good one. It's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got the walk up. We've got the pregame meal. Uh, Kiss is good. We're going to make sure. Everyone needs to know the live music there. Um, how about... Uh, 
did the, the Mount Rushmore, I, I'm curious, um, as we get this season kind of get rocking and rolling, like a, it, without not bragging on Founders Park, Founders Park's the best in the business. In your college baseball experience, has there been like, maybe not the most electric environment outside of Founders, but one that's like played a presence in like an intimidation factor, not even intimidation, but just. Yeah, I would say more that I've been a part of Mark Lake Stadium down in Miami. I coached there for a couple of years. I was fortunate to be a part of the last national championship team there. I used to call it Mark Light Magic. It was real. Um, and when you walked into Mark Light uh, to play back in the day, like you could feel it. You could feel the tradition, the history. Um, it seemed like we always had ninth inning rallies and, and when we when we needed them and you just say hey, Mark Light Magic again. So I would say that's uh, that's the one that has had the most impact on me outside of Founders Park. Because it was real, you could feel it, and it's not the prettiest ballpark in the world. It's kind of the you know, it's like Fenway and Wrigley, right? It's the oldest. It's not the newest and nicest, but you just feel the tradition. I'd say that's the one for me. That's a good one. I almost forgot. I know why I was tripping over my words. Uh, we went walk up song. I, this is my Ted Lasso question. Are you a fan of Love Ted Lasso? Ted Lasso. He, he's the best. Love Ted Lasso. I, 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 I think he's not real. I, <laughs> I, I, I am a sucker for the fact that I just think Snake is actually might be Ted Lasso if you can the stash out. Um, my Ted Lasso question for you. Because he's, he's got a nice stash person. like Ted Lasso, by the way. By the way, we're going to have to close that. Is that to honor Ted Lasso? Uh, <laughs> I think it's out of like, I'm obsessed with him a little bit. My girlfriend hates it. Totally but I'm trying my best. Um, Got to do something to stand out in the, the broadcast field. Uh, my Ted Lasso question, was the first concert you ever went to, best concert you ever went to? Well, I'd say the first, the first, first concert, concert I think, was a KISS concert when I was a kid. Again, when I, I grew, where I grew up, KISS was, you know, people like KISS, what's this guy talking about? But when I was a kid, they were, they were the rage, and so I went to a KISS concert when I was about 10. Best concert I ever went to, I would say Elton John and Billy Joel oh. at Wrigley Field. Um, oh. Hard to beat. Hard yeah, to beat. Fire yeah. and the two guys. Yeah, it, it was good. That was really good. That's strong. Really good. I, I, we almost have to mic trap on that. I think. Wow. Well, <laughs> whatever you want. Okay. Whatever you, it was a great night. That's a drop. Night. Excuse me. Man, Billy Joel and Elton John. Um, final question. Going into the season, it'll be the end of the rapid fire. Um, lofty expectations for your team. Every coach does, right? I'm curious from a behind the scenes standpoint. What's it going to take for your group to to achieve all goals and what you want to do this season? You know, it's a great question. I think the goals are always the same. This team wants to go to Omaha. This program wants to go to Omaha and have a chance to win it all. Um, the only way you get there is just you. It sounds cliche, but you just follow that process. You work your ass off. You recruit as well as you can. You make sure the guys are prepared, just like we talked about at the beginning of this interview. Um, and then you leave it all out there. And uh, you try to make sure you're mentally and physically prepared and you give it everything you got. And then the chips will fall where they may. They, they just will. Last year we had a chance to win it all. It wasn't our year because of some injuries. And so this year we, we, we get back at it and try to do it again. Uh, at the end of the day, that, that's what you do. You try to just try to attack it and let's see what happens. Yeah. You guys made a heck of a run in that super regional. It felt like you guys were in a position and, and, and you guys were right there. And you guys were you know, getting better every year. Um, I would be remiss to mention I'm trying to get something grown as well, too. Um, you guys got solid dudes. Really, really I good. Agree. I would agree with that. Um, I'm trying to rename it Costumes. Mm -hmm. Just like the best costume yeah. game on, in, in, in the game. The best Gamecock uni that you guys are rocking. You got to go with the garnet pins. Yeah. You they're just so have classic. to, right? I mean, they're just classic. They're, I mean, you, you can picture the, the World Series being won with that uniform yeah. on. I mean, you got to go with the garnet pinstripes. Boom. Couldn't have said it better without him. Appreciate you, Coach. Thank you so much. Pencil Talk Takeover. We out. Coach Kingston, Gamecocks are going places. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate you, sir. All right. Can't thank you enough, man. That was a blast.